Hello there, my name is Ismaus and welcome to another Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, uh, lighting in Blender 2.8 uh, especially using the EV renderer uh, render engine and uh, we're going to be talking about this short horror movie uh, I made uh, yeah so and then look at art uh, at how I set up the lighting so if you haven't watched this uh, let me just play it for you here and uh, lighting here was very important for me because it was part of the story It's what I used uh, to tell the story you can see we have this monster uh hidden in the shadow and uh, their silhouette comes out a little bit uh so it was really important for me to have control over uh, where the shadows are going to be and where uh the lights the light is going to be and uh, sometimes this can be hard to control if you're using ev uh, with cycles it might be a bit easier because it's a uh, ray tracing uh engine uh, but uh in ev it's a bit harder uh, so in this story I'm just going to show you or break down how I kind of try to control uh, the lights uh, in Eevee I uh, can see when they come in uh, some of the lights are switched off uh, when she comes in uh, some of the lights are switched off so she doesn't see the entire the monster right away and uh, but uh, there is a little faint uh, silhouette coming through the the uh, the yeah, that area so let's see how uh, that lighting was set up so I have the scene already here okay why is this okay yeah let's see this is our scene and uh, you can see we have the kitchen and whatever this room is supposed to be and then some upstairs just that go to uh, the second floor and then our monster would be right around here so and uh, the reason for why, why i added this room because uh, it would have been too close let me just hide this wall and uh, this here the reason i added this room is that uh, uh, if i added this monster right here it would be too close to, to not be noticed so i made sure that uh, they are here we have a light here uh that would uh illuminate let me just uh, bring my paint mm, surface that would create a light so we, we would this area would be lit uh, but uh, the shadows would start at around here concealing uh, the monster so i needed a way to control uh, that light uh, effectively and uh, let's look at uh, a, a new uh, scene here with all the lights removed the first thing you want to do is uh, set up an HDRI image uh, to light up your scene. But uh, the problem with uh, using HDRI images is that uh, they they come in uh, too bright. And uh, I used uh, this image, uh, that's kind of an interior image, uh, because we are lighting an interior scene, uh, so that I can capture some of that lighting detail in here. Uh, what I see a lot uh, a lot of Blender users do is that uh, when they add an HDRI image, uh, they usually leave uh, the strength uh, to one to one or uh, which is one one hundred percent of the strength uh this kind of takes away your control over the lighting you you can see we don't have any shadows anymore uh, because it's, it's illuminating the the entire scene from all angles since we have lights from different from all direction and that's why you see we have this soft uh light so i tried limiting uh, the use of this hdri image uh to capturing uh, the reflections instead of using it to light up the scene and uh, because you can see with this with this strength uh, set to one or 100 percent uh, we get kind of ambience uh, lighting uh, lighting from all directions and uh, we don't have any harsh shadows uh, because we have a lot of artificial lights uh, artificial light from uh, bulbs and what you would expect to have some bit of uh, harsh shadows or sharp shadows and uh, having an hdri image for your lighting with a strength of 100 percent usually and uh, depending on uh, what kind of image you have uh, you, it takes away that uh, that uh, control uh, it doesn't produce uh, that sharp lights and you can even see from this hdri image uh, there isn't any sharp uh, sharp uh, shadows because it's daytime and uh, you have uh, some lights coming some light coming out 
coming in from the windows and uh, the scene we're trying to create is a night scene so we only have light coming in from artificial sources i also needed the sharp shadows uh, to convey the story i was trying to make uh if this uh, monster was uh, was was visible from uh this far then it would break uh the story i was trying to convey so what i did was reduce the strength of uh the environment lighting at uh, something really faint i like this and uh, mostly to just capture uh reflection uh, like you see in this uh fridge here i don't know if you, if that's visible as uh, you can see we are capturing some bit of reflections even though we don't really have enough lights uh going in so let's look at uh, how we can add a light here uh, to kind of have a sharp shadow here like we have in this scene uh, here you can see we have a point light and the reason i'm using a point light here is because area lights is that uh, they are two directional for such a scene so if i have an if i added an area like this then it means that uh, the ceiling will not be lit because uh, the the area lights only produce lights I produce light facing uh, this direction down this where this uh, line is facing so you can see we don't have the ceiling being illuminated because we have set this as an area light uh, which is cutting off uh, the supply of light uh, around here uh, to downwards but uh, if we use a uh, point light then you can see we have we get those uh, that specular highlight uh, on the ceiling the light is a bit too faint right now so let me increase it to about uh, let's see see these sharp shadows we are getting so and sometimes you might want to you can reduce how soft or how sh how sharp the shadows are are uh, by increasing or reducing uh the the radius of of the light so uh, also this is too large uh, because we're seeing uh, the character now so uh let me reduce it further something like that uh this the size or radius of your light will also affect uh how reflections look so if i bring this closer you can see how the specular on these walls is being is, is changing as well so yeah that is something to keep note of so if you want I think something like this would look a little bit better uh, but i want this to be pushed inside here so that we have that sharp shadow and just bring it closer to this side and uh, just to sell the effect even more uh sometimes if you have shadows moving around so this fan here i noticed when i added it in it will it was creating a more realistic feel of a home uh, since we have like a, a ceiling fan rotating around so if you bring the light closer to the fan i start seeing uh, that shadow and uh, if you have it rotated you can see how the kind of effect it, it adds to uh, to the entire scene uh, so i don't i don't know if i if this was visible in this scene here but uh, okay it's not that it's not coming through as as much but uh yeah so sometimes you want to add in a few details like that you can control the light to uh, change uh, the feeling of the of what of the scene so you see so the the light looks a bit dim right now and uh, the shadows are too dark for right now but uh that is not a problem uh, because we're going to be baking this light uh, using light probes and uh, that means that uh, uh if you look at if you look at uh this right now uh, we are we are getting a very sharp contrast between uh, the light and the shadows and that's because uh, our light is not bouncing uh, that much so usually what happens in real life is that uh, when you have a source of light uh, it produces light and then that light bounces off different walls uh, to illuminate different areas where that are not exposed directly to the light so even though we have only one light in this scene uh this light would bounce will start to bounce and spread around uh, to illuminate uh, different areas uh and uh and if we to 
create that illusion, I, we use light probes uh, like this here, the irradiance uh, light volume uh, that will bounce off, bounce uh, this light and spread it around. So though the light might seem a little bit dim right now, if we add this uh, irradiance light volume, it will bounce the light around and uh, increase uh, the light we have in the scene. So now I uh, already have this light. So the other light we want to have is the kitchen lighting. So just go in here, duplicate this and bring it around here. You can see we have a sharp a shadow here, but uh, that will get reduced uh, after we add the irradiance uh, light volume. So now you can see she walks in uh, with uh, the kitchen lights on, but uh, they are not fully on because we only see these. I don't know how those lights are called, but uh, yeah. And uh, these are basically just uh, point uh, spotlights. I wanted to use IES lighting, uh, but uh, it doesn't. Uh, Blender EV doesn't support IES lighting, so let me cast uh, selection to cast her. Let's show you how this looks. You can see it creates that cone uh, light. But uh, right now it looks a bit too sharp. And uh, let me also just increase that strength a bit. And uh, this light is also overpowering uh, this light. And as, uh, we want this to be the main light source for our kitchen but uh, we also want to have some bit of some bit of lighting in our kitchen so something like let's try i remember when we add uh, the irradiance volume it will increase how much light we have in the scene so let's increase this uh, something like that and now we can increase the size of the shape the size of the spotlight something like this maybe push this up a bit If you want to reduce how sharp uh, this uh, cone is, you can just use the, bl the blend uh, value here to have something like that. Then I duplicated this. Make sure that it's aligned uh, with the position of the lights we have in the scene. Then I duplicated this to every other uh, light source we have using Alt D to duplicate an, as an instance. Uh, so that if I want to control all the lights, I just control all the con lights. I, I just control only one and uh, get the same effect. I don't want them to be too wide. Uh, so I push them closer to the walls. Uh, so that we get that con effect. But, uh, so we increase the blend as well. Then use Alt D again to duplicate these and have them on that side can see now what we are having you can also duplicate the on the other side to, do, to have the same effect as you can see them here I think I only used one here but uh, they should have been two See one there. Uh, I missed. I think one, another one here. Yeah. So, okay. You, you can see that uh, this light here is creating this rim light around her, her body. So, but uh, this side here is not very well lit. So you can just create another light or duplicate this one, and put it around this area. But also make sure that. Uh, it doesn't light up uh, that the also making sure that it doesn't light up the areas we don't want uh, to be lit uh, like where the monster is so you can see that this light is also lighting up uh, the this monster which we don't want so uh, there is an option to control how far uh, the light from a single side from a single light uh, spreads 
under that option can be found under uh, the custom distance so if you turn on custom distance you can reduce reduce how far the the light spreads so you can see now i can control how far that light uh, spreads so i just want to make sure that our monster is not lit uh, so something like here our character enters the room with a very little light and i can reduce uh, the strength of these to about 20 so that we don't light up the other uh, kitchen too much so maybe try 10 and then we have something uh, like that So let's start adding that those light probes, uh, irradiance volume, uh, so that we can have the light bounce around. So I'm just going to scale this down uh, to the size of uh, this uh, corridor. So I scale this something like this. Uh, you don't want this light uh, probe to intersect with walls uh, that co can co can cause a lot of some issues some lighting issues uh, that you might you will notice if you do that if you have these uh, intersect with walls so make sure it doesn't so, and uh, you can increase the resolution of this light probe by going into uh, its settings and uh, increasing uh, the resolution there I'm not going to do that because that will increase our bake time so let me just bake this so to bake this light probe, you just go under the render settings and uh, bake direct lighting. If you're using cycles, you don't even need to do these steps. Okay, another thing you'll notice is that uh, even when the camera closes in on the monster, you only see the silhouette, you don't see uh, the character itself. And uh, this character, I got the character from Mixamo and uh, I had to reduce its polygon count because it came in with uh, a lot of polygons and uh, my PC couldn't really handle the entire scene, uh, including this main character and lighting so it was going to take a lot of time to uh, render and uh, also uh, work with uh, previewing the animation so i had to reduce uh, the resolution a lot and uh, this uh, because i had this monster in the shadow i uh, you couldn't see uh, that uh, it's a, it was a very low polygon character and uh, the only time you see him come to come come into the light is when uh, he does that jump scare basically that's it and uh, that's how i set up the lighting for this scene i uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video